What is going on? Today we're talking about batteries, specifically dead batteries and parasitic draws. So I did a short a while back on parasitic draw, just using the multimeter, quick little video on uh, how to know when you have a parasitic draw, how to check for it. I figured in this video, since I got a lot of questions from that one, we'll dive in a little bit deeper. So the first thing, when I say parasitic draw, what do I mean? What I mean is maybe your vehicle dies overnight. You jump started it, your alternator's working, you just replaced your battery even, uh, vehicle still dies overnight. Maybe it's not overnight, maybe if it sets for three days or if it sets for a week, you go out and try to start it, the battery's dead. There's a good chance you have something on that system that is drawing too much power uh, when it's just setting idle. So I'm gonna show you how to check that. There's a couple things you need to do to prepare for your test. The first is to make sure that you have nothing on in the vehicle. Newer vehicles, they need to set for a while, you know, maybe give it a half hour to make sure all the modules, everything have powered down. You wanna make sure, you know, inside your vehicle, none of your dome lights are on. A vehicle like this, when we open the hood, that underhood light comes on, that's gonna throw off our test. So, I've got the underhood light unplugged on this one as well. So I know there's nothing on in this vehicle um, as it sets. That's gonna let us check if there's a draw in the system. Now, if you had a light on, if you had something else that was still on, that's gonna throw your test off. You're gonna think that you have a draw in the system when really you just have something that, uh, that is still on in that vehicle. Once you've verified that everything is off in the vehicle, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come disconnect your negative battery cable. Next, we're gonna get our multimeter out. Now, this is a really good meter um, for anybody that's new to using uh, voltmeters, multimeters in general, because as you see, when we turn this thing, it tells us exactly where our plug should be in. So if you're in the wrong one, it's gonna tell you, it's gonna light up. That way you know you're always in the right position. So ultimately our check needs to be in milliamps. Now, if you don't know just how large of a parasitic draw you have, it might be a good idea to go ahead and start on amps just so you don't blow the fuse in your meter. Now, once again, uh, this meter does a really good job of telling us exactly where we need to be. I will throw a link in the description for this one if anyone's interested. With our meter in milliamps, what we're looking for is less than 50 milliamps on this system when everything is off. Anything higher than that tells us that we have a parasitic draw on the system and we need to figure out why. So to check this, once again, we've got our negative battery cable disconnected. You're gonna take your two leads. One goes on the battery. The other one goes on the cable. And then we're going to watch our meter to see exactly what we've got going on. Now sometimes you will see a little bit of a spike initially um, because you basically just uh, gave that, that battery a circuit back to the vehicle. So some things are gonna power on. I'm gonna give it just a second to come back down. And as you can see, 5.5 milliamps, um, that's that's perfect. You know, we don't have a parasitic draw on this system. Now you also see how my number is reading a negative. All that is, is if I switch my leads, come back on here, it's gonna be positive. So that's just a reverse polarity thing. Doesn't matter either way, it's gonna give you the same reading. Say that we hook this multimeter up and we're seeing more than 50 milliamp draw. It tells us we've got a parasitic draw somewhere in the system. The next question is, how do we find it? So, the way you're gonna have to do this is it's very systematic. You're gonna go through and start pulling fuses one by one until that draw goes away. So, for example, in this vehicle, I'm gonna come inside. I've already got my glove box out. That's where my fuse box is. When I look at this, I see it's got an aftermarket uh, head unit stereo in it. A lot of times these things will go bad and you'll get a parasitic draw from those. So 
that's always a good place to start. So when we look here, looks like uh, number 14 is our radio fuse. So we're gonna pull that one out first. Now, one thing to keep in mind, my battery's disconnected, my multimeter is not hooked up. When you open this door, normally you're gonna get some dome lights that come on. So I don't wanna have my multimeter hooked up, this door open, um, because then it's gonna show a, a load. It may actually go um, higher than what the fuse in your meter is, and you can end up blowing the fuse. So I would come in here, pull this fuse, close my door, then I'll come back out here, do that same check to see if my draw has dropped down to normal or if it's still there. Okay, let's say we pulled that radio fuse, we hook our meter back up, our draw is gone. Awesome, that tells us the radio is the problem. Um, we need to take that head unit out, unplug it completely, put that fuse back in, see if the problem's gone. That'll tell us if it's in the head unit or if it's maybe a wiring concern. So we figure it out it's the radio, we can get that replaced, move on, awesome. We found the problem. Now what if when we pulled the fuse for the radio, the draw was still there? Well that means it's coming from somewhere else. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my radio fuse back in, I'm gonna move on to something else. Sometimes you just have to run through each fuse, doing them one at a time, to figure out where the problem is coming from. Most vehicles are all gonna have a um, readout like this to show you what each fuse does. So what happens if you pull a fuse that gets rid of your parasitic draw, but there are numerous systems on that fuse? So for example, maybe the instrument cluster and the cigarette lighter are both on that fuse. Well, now I need to isolate which of those is the problem. So uh, the easiest one that you can unplug, start there. So if the cigarette lighter, lighter is easy to get out, Unplug the pigtail off the back of it, and then see if your draw is gone, do that. Uh, if you can get the instrument cluster out, you may have to go that far. I've worked on vehicles where the speedometer actually had a draw in the module. You know, I ended up having the dash pulled apart, I ended up having the uh, cluster pulled out of it, and one by one, I was unplugging the tack, the speedometer, uh, the fuel gauge, all those different things in that system. What I found out is what made the, uh, the power draw go away was when I unplugged that speedometer. So that told me that's where my parasitic draw was. So the fuses will usually get you right to where your problem is, but once again, if there's numerous systems on that fuse, then you may have to dig just a little bit further to isolate where the problem is. While we're talking about dead batteries, a jump pack is a great thing to have. So uh, they've become so compact, they're easy to store. This one is from a Wanfi. This company sent me this thing to try out. Um, I've had pretty good luck with it so far. I've done anything from a motorcycle to a car. It's super easy to use. It will charge um, your USB devices. It's got a flashlight on the top as well. Gives you a digital readout of what the battery charge is, it plugs into a phone charger to be able to charge this thing up. So all we got to do is we pull this thing out, pull out our leads for it, and you can't plug this thing in wrong. So we open this up, plug it right into the side. Now you're going to see we're getting some flashing lights. We're going to get those until we get it hooked to the vehicle. So we come over to the vehicle and we hook our leads up. This thing does have reverse polarity protection, overcharge protection, all the things like that that you would expect. Now once you get it hooked up, you see our light goes green. Now that thing is charging this battery. Um, it's also putting out enough power that we should be able to go ahead and start this vehicle. Now. Um, say you get into the scenario where it doesn't quite have enough power. This thing also has a little button on the side of it that if you press that, it's gonna give it just a little more power to be able to jumpstart you in that scenario. After we get the vehicle started, simply removing our connections. We can pop this back out. 
go plug this thing back in for the next use. Now I can't speak to longevity on this system yet. Uh, I've just received it about a month ago. Um, but I will throw a link in the description below if you're interested in this. Like I said, for the price point, it's pretty affordable compared to some of the other ones that are out there. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've got a vehicle that's got a parasitic draw. Um, that'll help you kind of chase down exactly what the problem is. Once again, it's a tedious process, but it's pretty simple. You just need a multimeter, um, be able to disconnect your battery and start pulling fuses till you find out exactly where that draw is coming from. If you did find this helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.